Sister Regina.
Father God, we ask that you continue to bless our president, Lord. Yes. Yes. Lord Jesus, as we go into looking for another president, Lord, yes. we ask that yes. you would touch everybody. Yes. 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 Yes.
though, despite no matter what's going on around in my apartment building or in my neighborhood, that I still must continue to press on. That's yes, right. yes, yes. I'm making my business to get ready every Saturday and get prepared to come in. <laughs> I just wanted to um, encourage everybody to, you know, not give up and keep hope alive no matter what it looks like, seems like, or appears. And I think it's in Jesus' name. Amen.
hear us today.
upgrade itself. Uh, while I was absent from this home, by the way, when I first came to this city, 50 plus years ago, <laughs> praise God, um, the two places I wanted to go was Big River Baptist Church, and I wanted to go to one of the churches of God in Christ, where some of my relatives had been when they were out here. The, this is a familiar passage of scripture, and for a number of years during my absence from first church home, by the way, this is the first church home in Los Angeles. When I came here, I found my way to a place on Vermont and there was a wonderful lady there, and at that time, Barbara and Beauty were, were separate. But there was a wonderful lady there named Vlad Sims. She later became Vlad Sims Paul. And the first person that made me welcome up had to do with having a place at her place. Well, I had visited various churches uh, that I'd heard of uh, on the air, but there was one church I went to back home and out here, and this particular minister's favorite verses and scripture was the 90th Psalms. But for the most part, the only time we hear it now is someone exiting this life. Mm -hmm. That should not be. Hallelujah. We're now in the month called Black History Month. Yes. Uh, the month by which we have been blessed now to legally celebrate yes, yes. the work and the worship and the hard labor. Yes of our people. Oh, yeah. uh, Black History Month, Afro-American History Month. I remember when it used to be called National Negro Work yeah. Week. Yeah. I remember when it used to be called National Negro Week. Oh, by the way, anything most of the problem that's in Espanol, El Negro, what go? No, no, no. Nickel. Black. In other words, the word Negro literally means black. When the people of Italian, Spanish, and other Latin descents, they say azul or blue, their day for green and Negro but black. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the term Negro literally means black. Yes, yeah. yeah. Now, here's something along this line. And of course, I was also to bless to have relatives not too far from a very famous high school. I was on the south side, but the high school was on the west side. The high school was called James Weldon Johnson High School. Originally, it was called uh, Westside High, but later, while he was yet alive, they honored James Weldon Johnson. James Weldon Johnson, the one who wrote Lift Every Voice and Sing. And they called it, at that time, the Negro National Anthem. Mm -hmm. Most people thought that was somewhat uh, discriminatory, but that was an idea. J. L. Weldon Johnson was <coughs> giving thanks to God and letting our 
people know that we come a long ways in a short space of time. And by reason of that, we should praise and sing and celebrate the goodness of God. Yes. So the 90th Psalms, I'm relating that to the first chapter of John. And you'll see how it comes out. Most times, now you only hear this uh, doing someone's funeral or something of that nature. But this is the prayer of praise for all minorities. Red, yellow, black, and brown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Both have been our dwelling place by all generations. For the mouth, for the air thou on the earth and the world. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou said, <coughs> I bring man to destruction and say, Thou said, Return, children of men, for a thousand years in thy sight is but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. The last part of that says this So teach us to number our days uh, that we may account our, our quake. So the 
whole emphasis here is we have lived not on that seed freedom. We have lived to have this nation and other nations of the world recognize the accomplishment of our people. All right, all right. And one of the most amazing things, and most people don't know this, but when it's explained, then you will understand where the term came from. Off the coast of Georgia, in the most in the extreme part of Florida, on the northeast side, there's a small island called St. Simon's Island. St. Simon's Island. It sits at the border of Georgia and Florida. St. Simon's Island. This Simon was from Nigeria. Yes. He was a freedman. He was born free and he was accepted in this nation as a freeborn, not a slave. The, this particular Simon in the 18th century was able to trace his lineage all the way back to another Simon in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, Paul speaks of the fact that there was Simon the Niger. Simon the Niger. So among the early converts in the African campaign, because at Pentecost and at Seda and at other times in Israel, people came from all over the world. And Paul was preaching one year, and there was a man from Simon. Simon, named Simon, he was from Nigeria. So when Paul speaks of him, he says that there were various ones, Androcles and others, and Simon the Niger. Well, yeah, Simon the Niger. Most white folk were about as illiterate as we are. So they couldn't say Niger, they said Nick. Mm. <laughs> so what they meant is a derogatory remark. Yes. Actually tells us that the ministry of Paul included people of color. Mm. Simon from Nigeria. St. Simon's Island in the United States was settled by descendants of this Simon hundreds of years back who was converted under the preaching of Paul. Mm. Simon the Niger. Mm. Niger? Yes. There's a country in Africa now called Nigeria. Mm. Nigeria. Mm -hmm. The land of Simon. Nigeria. Nigeria. And Nigeria has a very important economic and political influence on this world to this day. Mm. Now, the Bible tells us that when Pentecost occurred, there were people from every nation under heaven. On the day of Pentecost, the term Jew didn't just mean those of the Jewish faith. It meant anyone and everyone who had understood through the tribe of Judah that a Savior would come. That a Savior would come. And, and, and that this Savior would be not only the Savior of the Jews, but the Savior of anyone and everyone, anywhere and everywhere, anytime and all the time, who would dare to believe. In the third chapter of John, we read that the man of the Pharisees, 
named Nicodemus. Nicodemus, not Calamus, not Calamus, Nicodemus. He was of the Hebrew faith, but most likely he was one among those who were brought to Jerusalem from all over the world. They were rulers, religious leaders, and important people of commerce and education. In the Song of Solomon, we read, don't look on me because I'm black. Don't look down on me because right, I'm black. Right, right. I'm black, but comely. This word comely not only means good looking, but it means important. I'm here chosen. I'm black for the fact that as Israel prospered, people from all over the world people from all over the world came to Jerusalem during the time of Pentecost. And Pentecost was at the end of a 50-day celebration. But prior to that time, we read back in Jeremiah mm -hmm. that Jeremiah was thrown out of a dry well by an Ethiopian black man. The prophet Jeremiah had been rescued by most likely a Nigerian who had learned the truth about God having salvation for all people. Yes. Now, the main impetus here has to do with the 90th Psalms. Because the 90th Psalms can especially relate to our people. This is what they call Black History Month. And The Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, let me tell you why it was called that. Uh, during the time of Constantine, persecution of any believer in Jesus Christ, whether white, black, mixed, or whatever, was hunted down, was brought to punishment either by beheading or threat with a sword or even crucified because the empire of Rome had both Jews, Africans, and all people in it because Rome ruled the world at that time. So the prophecy in the Song of Solomon had to do with the fact that Solomon's wisdom brought people from all over the world. Yes, that yes. includes Africa. Hallelujah. And this particular young lady stole Solomon's heart. The heart of the great king, the wisest king, was stolen by a shepherd girl. When the men or doing farming and or doing military work or doing various other things, women also herded sheep. They brought sheep from one place to another. So when you read, don't look down on me because I'm black. I'm black, but I'm comely. This was a shepherd girl because the men in that region were either in commerce are on their way to war. Mm -hmm. So the women had to take care of the sheep. Mm -hmm. And of all the women that Solomon had at his disposal, it was a black woman that stole his heart. Mm -hmm. Well, that's no accident either. Because we find out also that David, Solomon's dad, married Bathsheba. Mm -hmm. And Bathsheba was a guy. 
the Hittite nation came from the northeastern part of Africa over the years long before Christ was born. We speak of the Magi, Mahadai, Mahaji, Mahija, wise men. They were not only wise men, they were rulers. And they represented all the people in the world. One yeah, yeah, yeah. Kakazoi, mm -hmm. one Mongoloid, mm -hmm. one Negroid. Mm -hmm. So there were three wise men that were rulers over all the known world at that time, even though they had separate nations. These wise men were wise because they knew God's word and they knew God's promise. God's promise was that one day a star, a scepter, a ruler, and one of the names we call our Savior in this day, we say he's a lily of the battle. Yes. We say he's a bright and morning star. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. The bright and morning yes. star. Yes. yes. Out of thousands of stars and millions of stars, just before dawn, yes. one of the brightest stars yes. is usually yes. from the eastern horizon. Yes. So the men from the east, mm -hmm. kings, rulers, yes. understood from a prophecy made by Balak or Balaam. Mm -hmm. And Balak had prophesied a star shall arise. Okay. Out of Egypt and a scepter okay. shall break the bow of the enemy. Yes. Our people mm -hmm. had a prominent part and do have a prominent part in the spreading of the gospel of our Lord yes. Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.
I know it was a blur. I know it was a blur. 